Good morning, my name is uh, Professor Ernie Matson, and I would be pleased to investigate your peripheral circulation. And uh, w would you be comfortable with that? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. So, when you are supposed to evaluate the circulation in a leg, the first thing you do is to look at the leg. And there are a number of signs that you can see. For example, is there any hemosiderin on the inside of the calf, which is a sign of uh, venous insufficiency? Another color thing is whether you have an ischemic red foot, which means that the bloodstream tries to reach the distal end of the, the leg without using the clogged main arteries. That is to say that the healthy red in this case is actually a sign of very serious disease in the arterial system. You can also look upon whether there is edema on the forefoot or around the ankle, because that is, might be a sign of that the patient is sleeping with a leg outside the bed during night time. This has to be compared with the opposite side, because bilateral edema is usually coming from the heart but unilateral is usually something in that very leg. And uh, you can then also look at other things here. You can look at if there are wounds here, necrosis. Of course you have to register the size of it, but there are other things. Is it dry or does it seem to be uh, infectious, a little bit wet, which is worse? Is it very well uh, a sharp border between fresh and necrotic tissue? That's good. If that is blurred, it might be a sign of that that type of wound can develop and increase in size. So one small detail when you are investigating the uh, uh, ulcers is to actually look between the uh, toes as well because sometimes you have a necrosis in between and that is not possible to be seen with a superficial sight. So you have to look in between to find them. You can also look at the venous filling on the forefoot because if you have a lot of blood volume coming down to the foot, that blood volume will fill the veins when it's coming back while if you have an arterial insufficiency, less blood is coming down and thereby the veins are less filled. Your inspection can also be uh, provoked by just lifting up this foot and look at the color here because now the bloodstream has to go upwards and if you have a low blood pressure in the leg, this foot will become pale. And that you can provoke further by compressing here to make the skin white, release the pressure and look at the refilling and how fast that is. And that should be read again within three to four seconds also in this provocative situation. If so, it is good. If not, there is something wrong with the arterial circulation. So the next step to investigate the circulation to the legs is to palpate your pulses at the different locations. Is that okay with you? Yes. So we have to investigate uh, the uh, circulations to the arms in a general evaluation of the circulation in the body. And the radial artery is going here and you put your hands simultaneously on both sides to compare the sides. Sometimes the patient can have a stenosis of the subclavian artery and then the pulses will be weaker on this left side. And you will as well then investigate the ulnar artery that goes here and that is also done simultaneously on both sides to be able to compare if there are any differences between the sides.
you first have to investigate the aorta, which is the main artery in the body, which goes in the middle, and then you have the iliac arteries going down to the legs like this. The bifurcation is approximately at the umbilicus, which means that the aorta is above that level. In elderly people, the aorta can be elongated and thereby going a little bit in a curvature. And if you then use your normal way to palpate, you can then make a mistake and think that you have a widening of the aorta uh, and thereby an aneurysm, while the truth is that the artery is just going in, in, in a swing here. Thereby, you have to get the aorta between your hands and put your hands above the umbilicus because that is where the aorta is located outside the abdominal rectus muscles because it's strong and then you let your hands sink slowly slowly down uh, to into the patients with each breathing of the patients until you have that aorta between your hands and then you can uh, uh, then you know whether it's widened or and if there are normal pulses. You follow the pulses in the direction of the flow from the heart and going distally. So when you have noticed pulses in the aorta, you have to see if there are pulses in the groin. Then you palpate the femoral artery. We have in the thigh two big parts of muscles. It's the quadriceps muscle and the adductor, adductor muscles. And in between there, there is a cleavage where the artery is going. However, here the artery is going quite deep and further up here it's more superficial, which means that the artery is more easy to palpate in the groin. But you can then feel this cleavage between the muscles to know the direction of the artery and then you go up to the, the, the inguinal band and in that crossing the artery is located. You put one hand there, you take the other hand and put it uh, on the other side and then you compare the femoral pulses and if there are any differences. And you will thereby immediately feel them. The next level is to go to uh, the popliteal artery, which is behind the knee joint. And to relax the skin behind the knee, you flex the, the leg, thereby the skin is more relaxed. And now you take your thumbs in front of the tibia, both hands behind the knee, and now you press the artery towards the backside of the tibia and thereby you will have a possibility to feel the pulses of that artery. It can be challenging to feel that artery. The next one that you should uh, try to palpate is the dorsalis pedis uh, pulse. And that is located on the forefoot of, 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 of the leg. It is a very superficial artery, so therefore you must be very light with your hand, just touching the skin, and then it will be very easy for you to feel the pulses. If you compress it with, with strength and power, you will compress the artery and you will reduce your ability to feel at least weak pulses. The other one, shown here on the other foot, is the tibial posterior uh, pulse. And that goes just under the medial malleole. But you have like a fibrous uh, uh, string, a fibr fibrous uh, membrane going here from here to the calcaneus, which is like a bridge under which the artery uh, is located. And thereby, to be able to feel that pulse, you must compress that fibrous bridge to get in touch with the pulse and then you feel it very, very well. So here, put on, put on some minor power. So now I would like to listen if there are any bruits for in, along your arteries. Is that okay with you? Yes. Oh, thank you. And uh, one place where you can uh, escalate and listen to uh, uh, bruits might be the carotid artery. You have the common carotid artery, the external carotid artery, and the internal carotid artery. 
If you place your stethoscope over the common carotid artery, you can hear roots that comes proximal to that point, and that is usually the heart. So if you want to know whether the, something uh, you have heard here, whether it is uh, put forward up here, you can listen here. But if you do want to listen for any uh, bruise uh, uh, in the internal carotid artery, you have to be very high up here. Otherwise you cannot hear it because the stenosis is located approximately here. But it is very crucial to underline that you can have a significant stenosis in the carotid artery without any uh, type of sound in the stethoscope. So it is obligatory to always make an ultrasound if you have a clinical situation where a stenosis in the internal carotid artery can be behind the disease or the symptoms you are to judge. Going down to the circulation of the legs, you start to listen over the aorta, like this. And then you go down to the groin, where we previously have palpated the pulse. You put the stethoscope at the same point and listen if you can hear any types of murmur here. Then you do the same thing on the other side. And just say as an example that you don't hear anything at all here, nothing here, but you hear some sort of a turbulent flow here. It means that you must have some sort of stenosis between my fingers here. That is to say that you can locate the stenosis, the narrowings of the arteries, very precise with the history when you talk to the patient and when you investigate the patient. The, the doing CT scans or other investigations with X-ray is usually only to map in front of an operation or an endovascular treatment against the stenosis, which you know since before where it is located.